as soon as this one comes up. There we go. All right. Good morning, everyone. Good to have you with us this morning, you that are not here. <laughs> Praise God. Um, I guess there's been uh, some confusion about our services. I did announce that we were not going to have our midweek Bible study for the next two weeks, which was last week and this week because of giving you a break on the holidays and so forth. Um, I did mention that we were going to have our <clears throat> Sunday morning service at regular times. So we are here, live. <laughs> Praise the Lord, even if you're not. Well, I hope you're alive. <laughs> anyway, hope you had a blessed Christmas. We did. And uh, I'm just not ready to let that Christmas spirit go. So we're going to have worship here in a minute. And it's going to be the Christmas songs we played last week. And by the way, we are believing God for uh, singers, musicians, songwriters, people that have a gift from God, but have no place to uh, use that gift. We're a church that has a place to use it without the people with the gifts. <laughs> so we can make a good match. So if you know anybody that lives in the area within even 30 minutes driving distance that wants to get involved and participate in a worship team, we're believing God to put together a first-class worship team with anointed people that have an anointing that they're not just performing, that they're up here being led by the Spirit and, and allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through their voices and through their music. And as far as music goes, we got a piano, grand piano, baby grand sitting over there and uh, waiting for an anointed worship person to be able to come in and play that during our worship time. Uh, we have some conga drums over here and uh, most of you that play guitars or basses or horns or whatever you have your own instruments we invite you to come on down and, and uh, spend a few weeks with us uh, in worship and ministry and see if this is a good fit for you amen amen um, this is the last week of 2020 i don't want you to jump up and down and shout yet because it's not over God is a God of suddenlies, and despite what we have gone through as a nation, what we as a church have gone through, what you and I as believers have gone through this past year, that God is still on the throne. He has not quit. He's not given up on us, and I'm not giving up on him, and I believe in a God of suddenlies, and I believe that we're going to see some suddenlies even these next five days before New Year's Day on Friday, we're going to see some suddenlies. Suddenlies in this nation, suddenlies in your life. It may be a financial suddenly. It may be a spiritual suddenly. <laughs> it might be a physical suddenly. Uh, but don't quit believing. Continue to stand in faith. Paul said, after having done all, stand. And we're continuing to stand as a ministry. We're continuing to stand and believe God for uh, restoration of everything the devil has tried to steal from us. We're not going to be stolen from. And every person that he's tried to steal from us, God's going to restore us uh, sevenfold to us. Every dollar he's tried to steal from us, God's going to restore seven times what the devil tried to steal from us. He's going to take it away from the devil and give it to us. As the Bible says, the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. And we are the just. Amen. So let's pray and let's get into uh, some worship time this morning, then we'll get into the Word. I got a good message. The Lord gave me a word for you, and uh, I, I trust you will share. Uh, however you do it on Periscope and Twitter, share it. On Facebook, you know how to share, and uh, let other people know that uh, God is awake and alive and doing great things at this place called Covenant Faith Center here in Chatsworth, California. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. Father, we want to thank you, first of all, for all of your blessings this, this past year. And we know we've got a few days left, but Father, we thank you that you have blessed us, you have protected us, you have taken care of us, and we appreciate everything you've done for us, Father. And that this past week, as we celebrated the birth of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, we, we call to remembrance what exactly Jesus did for us, that he paid the price for our sins that he actually went into hell and paid the price that we would have to pay in hell. And you sent your spirit in and raised him from the dead and then raised him up to see him at your own right hand. And you said in your word that we are seated with him in heavenly places. 
But Father, we look down upon this world and this life and all the attacks of the enemy as conquerors, as rulers of kings and priests. And we praise you, Father, because you are our Father and our God. You are a covenant partner, and you are a covenant-keeping God. We thank you that you keep covenant with us today. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We call upon you to minister the glory of the Lord, the signs and wonders and miracles, the healing, the deliverances, the gifts of the Spirit, whatever is needed in this place, both for those that are here and those that will be watching today, and, any, and for those that will be watching down the road at any given moment, that there will be a word for them, and the anointing on that word will break and destroy the yoke in their lives in the name of Jesus. And Father, we praise you for it. Holy Spirit, we ask you to take charge. Take charge of this entire service, this time of worship, the time of ministry in the word, the time of ministry in prayer, and even the time of receiving tithes and offerings. Holy Spirit, take charge. Lead and guide and direct us everything we say, everything we do, that it would bring glory to Almighty God in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's worship the Lord. Go ahead.
We give you thanksgiving for Jesus. We're so thankful, Father, that Jesus, oh, that, that he died, Tepohonda, our Savior, born into the earth, oh, to open the door, to open the way for all mankind, oh, to be redeemed. Thank you for it, Father. Oh, we receive it. We receive Jesus as it will hold the joy of our life, as it will hold our Savior and our soon coming King, we give you praise today, Father. We give you worship today and honor today and thanksgiving today and glory today. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, de bon zakarabasi. El de zakarasi. You sent him. Oh, Tataka, you sent the Savior into the world, your only begotten Son, your first begotten Son. Oh, Teteki, for now. Hasi, Bonza, there are many sons and daughters. Oh, Teteki, because of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we rejoice today. We're glad and not sad. Oh, every day we rejoice in our salvation for you are so great, Father. You are so good and so kind and so marvelous and wonderful. You're everything, Father, to us, and we worship and praise you today. We give you glory today and honor today and thanksgiving today. Oh, to take you. Glorious and glorious and glorious you are, Father. And we thank you for Jesus. Oh, we're so thankful today. We're so thankful, Jesus. We're so thankful, Jesus. Oh, to take you not only Jesus, it bones a kadiju. It's a make a way for us to be born again, but to lead us and direct us and guide us all the days of our life on this earth. To be connected to you, Jesus. You are the vine, we are the branches. So we stay connected. And as we stay connected, oh, blessed Holy Spirit, you lead and guide and direct us every day. Oh, to take bones a what a life we live. What a divine, supernatural life we live on this earth. Thank you for it, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, mighty, blessed Holy Spirit. We rejoice, we rejoice, we rejoice. 
Your word says rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Oh, church, rejoice. Amen. Rejoice in your great, tremendous, wonderful salvation. That's so full. It's packed full. It's a bonza karabasi, so packed with good things. It is a bonza kar. You've freely given us all things, Father. Oh, we thank you for that. We'll worship you today, Father. We'll worship and praise you today, Father, for you are the one and only God. You are Jehovah God, the great God. It is a bonza karabasi. It is a bonza karabasi anza kai. Oh, teteki anza kai. Not only oh teteki but our Father also, our wonderful Father. Oh, Father, we thank you. You are so kind and so good and so generous. It's a bo and so just, so pure, so holy. It's a bo ho, it's a teki anza karabasi. It's a te bo ho anza karabasi. Oh, we worship you today, Father. We worship you today and thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you, Father, that this year coming up, oh, super abundantly above all we could ask or think. And we, the church, are teaching us by the Holy Spirit to stand up with our authority and be all you've called us to be, to be a glory and an honor to you, Father. And this year we continue to push the darkness back. Oh, in the name of Jesus, that name that's above every name, oh, we worship you today, Jesus. And we do all you've called us to do this year, this coming year. And we're expecting, oh, we live expecting the hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, we worship you today, Jesus. We'll worship and praise you today, that name that set us free. That name, oh, that brought us into the kingdom of God. Oh, that name that's above every name. Oh, thank you, Father, for Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we rejoice today. Oh, part of our everyday rejoicing. Thank you, Father. 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 Through all eternity, we'll be thanking you, Father. Through all eternity, we'll be praising you, Father, and you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a, oh, what a heritage you've given us. What a life. Oh, thank you, Father. Glory to you, Jesus. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, you are great, Father, and greatly to be praised. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let me turn my microphone on. Praise the Lord. All right. Now, I uh, I may have switched my mic. I think we're okay. <laughs> I had to switch that uh, channel one. We don't know exactly what was going on with the connection, but uh, for some reason, we lost uh, our signal on our microphone channel one, and uh, so we had to change that. We have changed it, and now I believe it's okay. And we'll have to work on what happened after we're all done. All right, I'm just getting my stuff in order here, and uh, so that we can actually record everything properly and have power to everything. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to have all you with us, and I see there's a few of you already online watching. It's really interesting to me to uh, see after the service how many people uh, were watching that we didn't know about. I guess if you don't have an Apple phone, it doesn't record you watching, so we don't know. And uh, it seems, and I don't know if that's the case or not, but I noticed that Sometimes we'll have 20 people 
30 people, whatever it might be, watching. We look after the service, and, and it shows us how many people are watching. And uh, yet, when I look at the screen, I only see, you know, a handful. And uh, it's there's, so there's something there that's causing it not to show us how many people are watching. However many of you there are watching, we love you, we appreciate you, we're glad that you're watching. Amen. I think I got all my stuff over here that I need. Uh, praise the Lord, everything is moving good in the right direction. I want to say uh, thank you on behalf of Pastor Mary and myself for those of you that uh, gave special for us during this holiday time. We, we appreciate that more than you know. Uh, there's a There's a day during the year called uh, Pastor Appreciation Day. Um, I don't know when that is because I've never experienced that <laughs> that, that day. Uh, we're here because God's called us and anointed us to do this. And because he said he needed us here and uh, that you folks that are tuned in and watching need us. And by the way, we need you too. It's a mutual benefit here. Uh, it goes both ways. One of the things I'm going to ask uh, everybody watching to do is pray for us. Uh, you know, the devil attacks and, and uh, tries to run people off from a church where the word is going forth. Tries to run people off and get them offended. Uh, if I talk too much about President Trump, people get offended. If I talk about politics, people get offended. If I talk about the weather, people get offended. Um, it's just amazing how much... Uh, people allow themselves to become offended over things that have no eternal value. And the Bible says take no offense. And so we've got to get over that, folks. We've got to grow up. We've got to mature. We've got to get past being offended and know where God has called us, know what church he has planted us in, and no matter what happens, we are committed, we are faithful, we are part of that church body. Because God has called you, for example, to this church, if you are part of our congregation, to be part of a body, not just an independent rebel doing your own thing. And there, there is really no place in the Bible where it says, if you don't like what the pastor is preaching, get up and go somewhere else. Unless, unless and here's the conditions, if he's in sin, preaching unbelief. Well, we're not living in sin, and we're not preaching any unbelief in this church, so there is no excuse. We think we have the right to choose because we live in the United States of America where we were given rights to choose. But when it comes to the body of Christ, God plants you. You don't choose the church. God puts you in a church. And there's too many people that haven't recognized that and, and don't understand that God puts you in a place. And, and it doesn't matter. And I, we were just talking about this in the way of the church this morning. In the New Testament, there is no place where it talks about uh, a worship team. There's no place where it talks about a worship leader. There's no place where it talks about uh, children's ministries, youth ministries, uh, or any other outreaches other than evangelism. And we're supposed to come together to minister, minister to the Lord, and then that, by the Holy Spirit minister to each other. But too many times we go to churches based upon what a church can give us. Well, this church over here has a great worship team, and I need worship. This church over here has a great teaching ministry. I need teaching. This church over here has a great outreach, uh, so I need to be involved in outreach. Well, you don't get to make that choice. That's, that's the Spirit of God that tells you where you belong, plants you in a church. And we think, and I know a lot of countries is not this way, but we think that we can just jump around from church to church and go here for a while and go there for a while. If we don't like what pastor's preaching, we get up and go somewhere else. Which is a sign, and don't get offended, it's a sign people are not using their faith when they do that. Because if you believe your prayers, and if you're doing what the Word says, you are praying for your pastors and leaders in your church. And when you pray for your pastors and leaders, you expect results. And so if, if you get up and get offended, then maybe your faith isn't really active, is it? Maybe you've gotten over into unbelief. Just, just a thought. Just, you know, pray about it. See if, it, if that pertains to you. Anyway, uh, we love you guys. Part of our congregation. We've got some very uh, wonderful people in this church. We've got some very loyal people. 
very committed, faithful people. And we appreciate that. And um, getting back to what I started to say, uh, we want to thank everybody uh, that ministered to us personally as your pastors uh, this week. Somebody gave me a, I, I won't use any names, but somebody gave me a John Wayne replica figure about, would you say, Mary, about that tall? Mm -hmm. About that tall from one of his movies, the full outfit and everything. And, uh, you know, I'm a John Wayne fan. And uh, I, I just was so blessed by that. I mean, what an unusual gift to give a pastor. Um, but I appreciate it. That was such a blessing uh, to me personally. And so thank you so much. And then again, as I said, there's others who gave a special offering for us. Uh, that blessed us. That really blessed us. And we appreciate it. Uh, in fact, uh, we received one of the largest uh, Christmas offerings without us even saying a word or, or making the effort to do anything about it. One of the largest Christmas offerings, personally, we've ever, we have received, I won't say ever, but for probably the last, oh, close to 20 years, probably the largest one we've received. Uh, and, and when we've gone through what we've gone through as, a, as the church has gone through, and churches have been shut down, and you've got people that are staying at home because they're afraid of COVID uh, or whatever, well, they won't obey the law of the land. Well, when the law of the land goes against the law of God, I'll choose the law of God every time. Amen. But, you know, when you come to church as a pastor and you look out over your congregation and uh, you see a lot of empty seats, uh, that, you know, is a challenge. And we as pastors all over this country have had to use our faith to be obedient to God's calling and to the job he's given us to do. And so here we are in a year when uh, the attendance has, in most churches has been little to none. And uh, God blesses us with one of the largest Christmas offerings that we've received in years. So thank you so much for those of you that thought about us. And I thank you, we thank you for all of you that are praying for us. And we want you to know we are praying for you every single day. We're praying for you. And uh, if you're one of our partners, we pray more. <laughs> Praise God. All right. Just wanted to get that out of the way. Want to make sure that I didn't forget to thank everybody. Tell you how much we appreciate you. Amen. All right. And I heard that. Somebody said, we appreciate you too, Pastor. I heard that. I heard it right down in here. So thank you so much. Um, I want to share with you this morning. You can go ahead and start the message or start the recording. And uh, make sure you've got sound levels that are showing, the bars are showing movement. They got movement going on? No. Not yet? Has it gone cycle through to record yet? It's uh, no, not yet. Okay. It's going through your PC. Yeah, it, it should get through that. Did you push the little arrow next to the record button? Okay, so it'll get started here in a minute. All right, so I'm going to wait for that to start to give the title. Is going now? I'll give you a thumbs up. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Sometimes equipment don't move as move as fast as we want them to. Now it's working. All right. Praise God. Okay, the title. Of my message this morning, and God was speaking to me before I tell you the title. God was speaking to me literally all week long, and the phrase that He was speaking to me was His word that says, "Forgetting those things which are behind." So my title today is "Forgetting What's Behind." I'll make it short. Um, a number of you uh, that are watching got a copy of my notes. Sometimes I just feel impressed to send out a copy of the notes to a bunch of people just to bless you. Uh, technically, they are uh, for our partners, those that are supporting this ministry on a monthly basis. And uh, if you're one of our partners and you're not getting the notes, you're welcome to request them. And uh, we will send them to you, uh, email them to you free of charge. Uh, a partner is somebody that is, is supporting this ministry in prayer and with finances on a monthly basis. So if you're one of them and you didn't get our notes, uh, please let me know and we'll send them out to you. All right, so forgetting what's behind. We have all been through this year. What happened? It already stopped. It stopped. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I'm not sure if we need a new CD recorder or what. We, we've had this happen now for the last month or so. It's been, it'll start recording and it'll just stop. And that's the only CD recorder we have right now. Okay. So I'm, I'm assuming it's the recorder, although it could be bad CDs too. I don't know. Um, I don't know yet. Okay. 
Yeah, I haven't I haven't advanced that far. Okay. <laughs> there there may be, but I, I don't know. Okay. We can talk about it after the service. Okay. It's All recording right. again. No. It's recording again? Yeah. Oh now it's recording. No, I started it again. Okay. So maybe there's a loose connection or something. I don't know. Anyway, got um, Josh uh, Flora do, ha helping out with the sound today. His first time, and we appreciate that, Josh, very much. And uh, we're, we're getting more help, praise God. All right, so talking about this year, we've all gone through some challenging times. And uh, we've experienced, uh, each of us have experienced different kind of challenges this year. Uh, as pastors, we had to face the challenge of what do we do when the governor says you can't have church. And yet the Bible, uh, particularly the New Testament, talks about gathering together, coming together, and, and ministry that can only take place when we're together as a body of believers. And I had to make a decision that we were not going to close down, that we were going to have our services. If nobody attended... <laughs> When God called me to the ministry, I made a commitment that, that finally, during this year, I had to stand up for. I said, Lord, I'll preach if nobody shows up. If only me and my family is here. Well, right now, my family that's here is my wife because my kids are growing and they're moved away. But I made a commitment 47 years ago that I would preach the word if, even if nobody showed up. Well, I had to stand by that this year. Because for a few months there, March, April, May, uh, we had nobody showing up, just Pastor Mary and myself, for different reasons. They all had their reasons why they, they didn't show up. And then finally somebody called and said, is there any way I can come to the service? They said, you can come. You could have come the whole time, but you're more than welcome to come. And, and, and then we got another one, and it's been a family for a while, and then another one. Uh, so people are finally starting to get, you know, some are starting to get back in the habit of going to church. But I got to tell you, the devil doesn't want you in church. He really doesn't want you in a word church where you might actually get something you can use and, and beat him uh, with it. So he's trying his best to get people offended. He's trying his best to get people uh, separated from the things of God. He's trying to shut the church down, try to shut our, our voices down. And uh, we're not going to accept that. Amen? Amen? Amen. But we got to get past some things. All the things we've gone through this year, and again, each of us have experienced different things. A lot of people experienced a financial challenge because of what has taken place. Um, we've got to not continue to live in what was. We've got to begin to look forward to what we're believing God for. What is coming? See, when you're using your faith, you're believing God, and you pray and say amen, then you expect manifestation. If you're walking by faith, you expect manifestation. So it, the, the, the process is we formulate our prayer based on the Word of God. We pray in faith. We say amen or so be it, and then we look forward to the manifestation of what we prayed for. And too many times we get under pressure like we all have this past year, and we forget to look forward to the manifestation. All we're doing is looking around at all the problems or the challenges that we're going through. So we've got to quit doing that. We've got to do what the Bible says. Forgetting what's behind. In fact, I want to read to you. I'm only going to have three main points today. Uh, don't allow the past to keep you from your future. That could have been the title. Uh, putting the past behind you, could have been a separate message, and pressing toward your future, also could have been a separate message. But those are the three points I'm going to uh, uh, talk about today. So Philippians chapter 3, verse 13 and 14 from the King James translation, Paul says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do. Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press on toward the mark of, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. He's pressing on. And we've got to do the same thing. We've got to press on. Amen? Amen. i got to turn on a second microphone here. There we go. All right, sometimes they don't get as clear a sound if I don't 
have that second microphone. We've got to press on. We can't get hung up in what was and let that keep us there in the past. The Bible talks about, uh, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, too many people walk into the valley and start camping out there. They walk into a, a, a tribulation experience and they just, you know, stay there for a long time. But he said, yea, though I walk through, through the valley of the shadow of death. By the way, shadow doesn't hurt you. Mm -hmm. All right, it's just a lie anyway. We've got to go through and get to the other side, which is victory. Amen? So today, it's, it's about getting to the victory. It's about leaving the past, all the challenges, all the attacks, whether it's physical attacks, financial attacks, uh, attacks, the devil's trying to run you out of the church, or relational attacks, uh, getting offended, whatever it might be. We've got to get past that and get to the point that we are walking by faith. Just had to make sure I turned the power on my battery banks. <laughs> oh, praise God. Now, I want to read that same scriptures, the same two verses to you out of the Passion Translation. That's Philippians chapter 3, verse 12. I'm going to add one, verse 12. Paul says, according to this translation, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion into his abundance so that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. Every one of us has a calling and a purpose. You were put here on this earth at this point in history because God knew that if you would obey him, that you had the ability, the strength, the stamina, the, the don't give up attitude to make it to the end, that you could be a person of faith that could put a stop on the enemy's attacks. God puts you here because you're strong. I think that's amazing what a privilege it is to be in the earth at this point in history, which are literally the end times. So he says, let me read it again because it's so powerful. I admit that I haven't yet acquired. I'm getting uh, a lot of notices here that my sound is now too loud. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm just loud. So I'm going to reduce the volume a little bit and see if that helps out. All right, see if that's better. Um, he says, I admit that I haven't yet acquired the absolute fullness of that I'm pursuing, but I run with passion. See, that's me. I run with passion. I don't get passionate about many things. You can ask my wife. I'm kind of level, and and uh, I don't get too excited. I don't get too depressed, or you know what I'm talking about. My emotions don't go up and down. They're pretty steady. After all these years of walking my faith, they better be. <laughs> but there are things that I'm very passionate about. One is teaching the Word of God. Another one is praying for the sick. Those are my, my big, that's, those are my anointings. I'm, I'm anointed to teach the word and pray for the sick. I'm also anointed to minister to a congregation of believers as a pastor, a shepherd over their spiritual welfare. I'm passionate about these things. I'm passionate about the things of God. When I worship, I may not jump and dance and round and like some people do, but I've got a passion in me to worship God. Maybe in a different way than you're worshiping God, but that doesn't make it any less. Amen? And that's what Paul is talking about. He says, um, <clears throat> I run with passion into his abundance. I love that phrase. He runs into God's abundance. We need, to, we need to make that effort to run into God's abundance. Well, how do I do that? Where is that abundance? Well, first of all, you've got to meditate the word on his promises of abundance in your life. This isn't just monetary abundance, although that's part of it. We ought to have an abundance of joy. We ought to have an abundance of peace. We ought to have an abundance of faith. That's that faith coming by hearing, hearing by the word. And, but abundance, that word abundance is, uh, you know, if I could say it's all-encompassing. God wants to bless every area of our lives. Amen? What, what's it mean to be blessed? Mary, what's it mean to be blessed? 
to prosper, to excel, and to increase. Sounds like abundance, doesn't it? What, 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 when, when all your bills are paid, you have money in the bank, and you have enough where you can help others, what would you call that? I'd call that abundance. Abundance is not just having your own bills paid. Abundance goes beyond my need and puts me in a position to help somebody else with their need. Amen? Abundance. He says, I run into his abundance. Whose abundance? The Father's. Our Heavenly Father that loves us. Say, remember last week? Say, say it again with me. God loves me. Say it again. God loves me. Now let's, add, let's change it a little bit. My Father loves me. Say it. My Father loves me. You, we know your earthly Father loves you, but we're talking about our Heavenly Father. Almighty God, Creator of the universe, is our Heavenly Father. Amen? So Paul says, I run into His abundance. Here's the reason. So that I may reach the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill and wants me to discover. So you need to look at that and meditate on that for a little bit because God, he talks here about the purpose and the call that he's been called to fulfill. What has God called you to fulfill? Well, the, the, one of the very first things is that we walk in faith in Jesus Christ. Another one is that we walk in faith or by faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Why? Because faith brings results. And if we're not getting results in our lives, then God, it's not that God is displeased with us. It's like any father that loves his children. When our children are having problems, I am not pleased about that. I love my children. I love my grandchildren. I want them to have their needs met. I want them to be blessed. And, and so when they get results, that brings me pleasure for my kids. Amen? When we use our faith, build our faith, and use it and start getting results, that brings pleasure to our Heavenly Father because we're walking in His footsteps, walking in success. Amen? Amen. Verse 13 now from the Passion Translation. I don't depend on my own strength to accomplish this. However, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart to the future instead. I like that translation. I forget all the past, even the successes of the past. They're good for testimonies. Uh, I know David talked about remembering and, and, and being in remembrance, calling to remembrance, things that God has done in the past. But we don't live in the past. We live by faith in the now and going toward a future, a goal, a vision. Amen? So he said, I don't depend on my own strength. That's, that's one of the things we got to learn. Quit depending on what I can do. Start depending on what God can do. Amen? Amen? He says, I do have one compelling focus. I forget all of the past as I fasten my heart on the future instead. If you're always living in the past, and, and I grew up in church, so I... I'm a third generation minister. My mother was a worship minister. My grandmother was a pastor. And um, I, I somehow missed the worship gene. <laughs> I have tried to leave worship, and I don't claim that I have that gifting. Um, but I did get the pastor gene and the teaching uh, anointing. But um, I could do like when I grew up in church, a lot of preachers that would think back, oh, I remember back in 1940, you know, whatever it was, and there was a great move of God in this church, and we were overflowing. Well, I can think back, back in, in the late 70s and early 80s, we had a, a move of God ongoing in our church, and, and I can think back about, you know, how we had uh, seating capacity for 500, and we ended up going to two services a day, and we ran a school, ran a school of ministry, and I can think back about the glory days, you know. But he says, you know, good, bad, indifferent. Put it behind you. That's past history. It's good to remember the blessing of God occasionally, but we don't live there anymore. And don't let the mistakes and failures, or what may feel like and look like failures in your life, don't let them hold you back. You say, well, you don't understand what I've gone through. You don't understand what I've done. And, and how I've treated, you know, people or whatever it might be. Well, God understands and God forgives. If God forgives, we've got to forgive ourselves. Amen? Amen. 
So he says, I forget all the past. I fasten my heart to the future. What is the future? It's the plan of God. What he talked about in the previous verse. Uh, the purpose that Jesus Christ has called me to fulfill. The plan of God. The vision. The goal that God has put in our hearts. And I've got some vision and goal uh, that God has put in my heart that are ahead of us and they're bigger than anything in the past. And right now they're more important than anything in the past. Because I cannot change the past. I can only change the future as I move through it. Amen? Amen. So we need to start looking ahead to what God has called us to. Forget all the mistakes and failures and defeats you may experience. Uh, and, and start saying, God, I'm, I'm done with the past. I'm moving forward. Amen. Verse 14, he says, I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointed Jesus. Through Jesus, I can have victory. Through Jesus, we can win the, the, the crown, the victor's crown, like the Bible says. Through Jesus, we can walk through the valley of the shadow of death to victory on the other side without being, without having any negative effect by that shadow. Amen? Uh, like the three Hebrew children in the fiery furnace. Well, they were in the fire. They were in the furnace. But the Bible says that there was an angel of God there that was overshadowing and protecting them. And when they finally were brought out of the fire, and by the way, the men that threw them in the fire all died from the heat of that fire. It was it was heated I believe the Bible says that he is seven times hotter than ever before. Uh, and the guys that threw him in died from it. And here they are. They're standing in the middle of it, just standing there. And this angel's there. And the, and the king saw the angel, and he said, get him, bring him out. And he brought him out. And the, and the Bible says that there was not even the smell of smoke. The ropes that bound their hands had been burned off. There was no marks, no soot, no smell like they had never been in the fire. They were in the valley of the shadow of death, but they came through to victory. Amen. We don't need to stop and camp out in that valley of failure and defeat. We need to keep moving, like Paul said, I keep moving, I keep pressing forward for the call of the calling of God. I, I like this verse 14 from the Passion Translation. I run straight for the divine invitation of reaching the heavenly goal and gaining the victory prize through the anointed, anointing of Jesus. That we, we just camp there for a little while on those verses until we get the revelation inside of us and we begin to step out and live those verses in our own lives. See, that's what we have to do. We've got to begin living the Word. We talk about the Word living in us, but the reality is God wants it to come through our life and, and we're supposed to live that word. These are three good verses to live. I press on. I don't stay in the past. I reach for the crown. I reach for the victory. I reach for the goal that God set before me. Amen. Now, dealing with, with failures and defeats and particularly sin, uh, the Bible says in Romans 3, 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have. All have. We've all sinned. I don't care how righteous you think you are. You've sinned. A lot of times it's that, that righteous attitude because you got a bit of pride. Pride is sin. Oh, I'm so righteous. I do all the right things. I pray an hour a day and I read the Bible an hour a day and I'm out witnessing to people on the street. And that's all good. But the moment you think that you have a special place in heaven, like you're somebody special because you do all these things, all of a sudden, pride rises up. That's what got the devil. Pride rises up, and now you're back in defeat because of that pride. Amen? But, what's the Bible say? It says, if we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all, everybody say all, all unrighteousness. We do not have to be held back. We do not have to be uh, kept in bondage because of past failures, past mistakes. There is the, the, the most heinous thing you can think of, the most terrible thing that you've ever done. 
God has already covered it by the blood of Jesus. All you've got to do is receive. If we confess our sin, God is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. He didn't say some. He said all. Amen? The problem is, too many times, we don't put our faith in the promise of God, and we think, well, I've done some really bad things, and you don't understand. Well, I don't have to understand. God understood, and he sent Jesus to pay the price for it. What do we do? We've got to tur turn all of that. The Bible says casting all your care on him. Why? Because he cares for you. He's made provision. Amen. Paul talked about, uh, in way of uh, illustrating, he talked about some of the things he was going through. Why don't you go to Romans chapter 7, verse 14. I'm still getting a bit of a surge sound-wise, and I'm not sure why. Romans chapter 7, verse 14, from the Amplified Translation. <clears throat> verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual. Paul says, but I'm a creature of the flesh. Carnal, natural, human. <laughs> We're all human, right? We all live in a fleshly body. We all have a fleshly-minded soul. Our mind, our will, and emotions, that's our soul. So we all start off as, uh, you know, as we get past the, the childhood age. We start becoming teenagers and adults and so forth. Our soul is constantly being affected, developed by something, whatever we surround ourselves with. Your mind, the way you think, your will, what you're willing to yield to, your emotions, all have impacted your life, and been impacted by things around you. He says, I'm a creature of the flesh. I'm carnal. I'm natural. I'm human. I'm spiritual. What's he saying? He's saying the same thing we all say. I'm just human. I make mistakes. Sometimes I make them on purpose. I mean, let's face it. There's some sins that are a lot of fun, at least temporarily. But that's flesh. That's carnal. Amen? And sometimes we yield to that temptation. People say, oh, I, I don't like, you know, I don't like this, I don't like that. Well, if you're doing it, you must like it, otherwise you wouldn't be doing it. So we've got to get our minds renewed so that we no longer desire those things. Amen? So, having been sold into slavery under sin, verse 15, he goes on and says, For I do not understand my own actions. I'm baffled and bewildered. I do not practice or accomplish that which I wish, but I do the very thing that I loathe, which my moral instinct condemns. Now, if I do habitually what is contrary to my desires, that means that I acknowledge and agree that the law is good, morally excellent, that I have, and that I take sides with it. However, it is no longer I who do the deed, but the sin principle which is at work in me, and has possession of me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot perform it. I have the intention and urge to do what is right, but no power to carry it out. For I fail to practice the good deeds I desire to do, but the evil deeds that I do not desire to do are what, I'm, I, what I am ever doing. You, you ever feel like that? So you, you try and try and try. There's this area of weakness in your life, and, and you just keep yielding to it, and you can't figure out what to do about it, and why, why can't I get over this? Why can't I get through this? And Well, you can. That's what Paul is talking about here. All right, so verse 21. So I find, now we're in, in case uh, you lost, uh, we're in Romans 7, verse um, 21. So I find it to be a law or a rule of action of my being that when I want to do what is right and good, evil is ever present with me, and I am subject to its insistent demands. For I endorse and delight in the law of God in my innermost self with my new nature or my spirit, but I discern in my bodily members and the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh a different law or rule of action. 
at war against the law of my mind or my reason, and making me a prisoner to the law of sin that dwells in my bodily organs in the sensitive appetites and wills of the flesh. Now, Paul has a real challenge here, and we've all faced this. He's struggling with the flesh. He's struggling with a fleshly mind. He's struggling with fleshly emotions. He's struggling with uh, the, the, the temptations of the body, the flesh itself. And it's all considered the flesh when we talk about these issues. He says, I'm struggling with this. He said, I don't seem to get, be able to get victory over it. I know I shouldn't be doing these things. I know I shouldn't be living that way or talking that way or whatever it might have been. We're all, we've all been there. Some that are listening to this right now, you're there right now. And you're in a place of guilt and condemnation because you, you've messed up somewhere along the line. Well, the devil's the one putting guilt and condemnation on you. It's not God. God is a God of grace and mercy. And he doesn't put guilt and condemnation on you. So, well, maybe that's the Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit doesn't put guilt and condemnation on you either. He speaks to you in a gentle voice. And he nudges you. He impresses upon you. Changes to make. Decisions to make. And it's up to you to make them. He, he will never force you to do anything. Well, God, you know, he, he gave me a car accident and put me in the hospital to get me straightened out. No, that's a lie of the devil. If you believe that lie, then you'll believe the lie when the devil tells you God don't love you. And you ain't going to heaven. That, see, he just goes from there to bad and worse. God does love you. God does forgive you. You know, we've got, you know, six children and ten grandchildren. And, you know, they've all made mistakes. They've all done, if I can use the word, stupid things, just like we have. Nobody's immune to that. But the difference is, as a parent or a grandparent, our love overrides anything else. And even though they may need discipline, they may need teaching, they may need training, the fact is our love still overrides all that. And, and you know, they can steal from you. And if you're a good parent, you love them no matter what. Amen. We love our kids. We love our grandkids. And I, I don't have to agree with Maybe a lifestyle choice that they've made. Uh, you know, there's all kinds of things. When you have kids and grandkids, they're all, they all got their own lives to live. And too many times we can look at something in their life or a decision they made and think, well, I wish they hadn't have done that. But you know what? That doesn't change our love for them. We love them no matter what. Because we're parents. Well, God is our father. Where do you think our parenthood comes from? It comes from the father God. He loves us. He forgives us. We've got to get that. Amen? Amen? Now, let me just give you a quick lesson on how, how temptation comes. James chapter 1, verse 13. We'll get back to, uh, to Paul here in a minute. James chapter 1, verse 13 through 17. King James translation. Let no man say when he is tempted. By the way, let me insert here. The Greek word that's translated tempted is also the same word translated tri uh, test, trials, and tribulation. So when we use the word tempted, it would be, and, and actually clarifying your understanding here, to say it this way. Let no man say when he is tempted, tested, tried, or if I can use this word tribulated, that he is, I am tempted, tested, tried, and tribulated by God. For God cannot be tempted tested, tried, or tribulated with evil. Neither does he tempt, test, try, or tribulate any man. And that's all correct. You can put any one of those words in there, depending on what it is you're dealing with. And it tells you God is not your problem. He's not the one putting you through whatever it is you're going through. We have an enemy who's out to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's trying his best to steal from you, trying to kill you, trying to destroy everything in your life. So we need to understand John 10, 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life and that in abundance. That's your dividing line right there. Everything that comes at you, you have to put on one side or the other of that dividing line so you'll know where it came from. Once you know where it comes from, you know how to deal with it. Amen? So in verse 14, every man is tempted, tested, tried, or tribulated when he's drawn away uh, of his own lust and enticed. Then when lust has conceived, 
it bringeth forth sin, and sin, when it is finished, bringeth forth death. Didn't we read before the wages of sin is death? I think we read that last week or the week before. Verse 16, do not err, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So settle the fact God is not your problem. All the things you've done in your in life up to this point, all the mistakes, all the errors, God has forgiven you. It's already there. All you've got to do is receive it. Jesus already paid the price for every sin you've ever committed or ever could commit. But you've got to receive that forgiveness and quit allowing the devil to put guilt and condemnation on you. So how do I do that? Open your mouth and declare what God has done for you through Jesus Christ. Amen? He redeemed me. He, for, he paid the price for my sins. Hung them on, his, on the cross. And the sin is no longer having dominion over me. No longer is my master. Amen? Amen. All right, so... Romans chapter 14, verse 22. Paul speaking to the Roman church says, Hast thou faith? In other words, do you have faith? You, you say you've got faith. Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemneth not himself in that thing which he alloweth. When, when you've done something and you've already been convicted, you know you made a mistake, you went the wrong way, you made the wrong choice, and now you're trying to get back into fellowship with God. By the way, God never left you. If, if you feel like you're alone, it's because you left God. But he says, happy is a man that can, does not condemn himself in the thing which he allows. And, that, and, and he that doubteth is damned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatsoever is not of faith is sin. Now, he was talking to the Romans, and they come together, and they, they have these, these um, celebrations. And, and some believe you can eat meat. Some believe you can't eat meat. And, and, of course, today we've got all kinds of ideas out there about what you should. Even in the vegetarians, there's, there's extremes, and there's uh, vegan, and there's I mean, so many different things. Uh, some people, I've heard of people having a diet that's uh, pure protein. They always eat meat. And that's all they eat. They don't eat vegetables. And I've heard people go the opposite direction. Bottom line is, whatever you do, you got to do it in faith. Now, you cannot sin in faith. <laughs> but you can receive forgiveness in faith. And by faith. Amen? Now, I want to go to Hebrews chapter 4. We're going to talk about putting things behind us now, as, as if we haven't been already. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 4, verse, four, verse uh, 15, and we're going to read verse 16 as well. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities and assaults of temptation. But one who has been tempted in every respect as we are, yet without sinning. Now let me ask you a question. If you could not sin, could you be tempted? It would be impossible. If it was impossible for you to sin, then no matter what the devil throws at you, it's not a temptation. That's why Jesus had to strip himself in Philippians chapter 2, where it says he stripped himself of deity and became a man. That's why John says he, the reason he could exercise divine judgment in the earth is because he was very man. That's why he's called both son of man and son of God. He was son of God, but he stripped himself of that title and became son of man. Why? Because he could then understand us. He was tempted in every aspect that we could be tempted. So, oh, he would never have been tempted to do this. Then the Bible's a lie. It says what it says, and we've got to accept what it says as fact. He was tempted in every respect as we are. Everything you've ever been tempted to do that you know is sin, 
Jesus was tempted in it. I know that you, you might find that hard to believe, but that's what the Bible says. And we know that he was living as a man, not as the Son of God while he was in the earth. We know in the garden he was tempted. We know he was tempted by the devil in three different areas. And then he, when he was praying, um, when he said, Lord, you know, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. He, he was tempted to try and find another way to accomplish God's plan for man. But he said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. He submitted to God's will. Amen? So he was tempted in every aspect. So let's read verse 16. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace, the throne of God's unmerited favor to us sinners, so that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help, coming just when we need it. Hallelujah. God knows our weaknesses. <laughs> God understands the weaknesses of the flesh. And so he's made provision for us. And that provision is Jesus Christ. He sent Jesus to pay the price, bear our sins, and all we've got to do is receive him by faith. Once we receive him, we are instantly cleansed from all sin and unrighteousness. And after that point, if we ever sin again, all we've got to do is come to the Father and confess, Father, I've sinned. It's not like God didn't know. He wasn't waiting to find out about it. He knew, but we've got to recognize it, and we've got to deal with it. So we, Father, I have sinned. And the Bible says he's just to forgive you and cleanse you from all sin and unrighteousness. Amen? Amen. Romans 3.24, And all are justified freely by his grace through the redemption that came by Christ Jesus. All are justified freely by his grace. Hallelujah. Mary, you keeping time? You probably weren't. No. Have you been keeping time? We're at 20 minutes. Oh, we got left or to go? Um, that's gone by. Gone by. Okay. Well, we're doing good. All right. I want to get back to what Paul was saying in Romans chapter 7. So let's go to Romans 7, 24, Amplified Translation. This is the end of what I was reading there before in Romans. And uh, he's kind of discouraged, kind of frustrated. He says, Oh, ha unhappy and pitiable and wretched man that I am, who will release and deliver me from the shackles of this body of death? He asks you a question because it's, it, it, you know, it's... Uh, <laughs> We all got, we've all got to come to a point of understanding what he's saying here. Who will deliver us from all the failures and defeats and mistakes and bad decisions? The next verse tells us. He said, oh, thank God, he will, through Jesus Christ, the anointed one, our Lord. So then indeed, I, of myself, with the mind and heart, serve the law of God, but with the flesh, the law of sin. In other words, he's saying, I recognize I'm dealing with temptation. I recognize that the flesh is weak. He's saying, but God will deliver me through Jesus from all of it. All that's been done and all that I might be tempted to do. And here's what I like what one preacher said. When you get tempted to do something you know you should not be doing, start praying in tongues. Start praising God. You cannot go through and yield to that temptation when you're praising God. If they don't work together. It's like oil and water. They don't mix. So one of the things you can do to overcome the temptations you're dealing with is every time the temptation comes, start praising God. Start praising God. Praise Him and give Him glory. Pray in the Spirit until that temptation goes away. Because the Bible says resist the devil, he'll flee. And that's what he's trying to do. He, the temptation is the attempt by the devil to, to use your weaknesses against you. He puts pressure on where he knows you're weak. So I just start praising God. I praise you, Father. I thank you. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for my deliverance. Hallelujah. So you start praising God, and then you receive by faith. If you messed up, you receive forgiveness. You don't receive condemnation. You don't receive guilt. You say, you know what? I messed up. 
Next time, I'm going to praise God and I'm not going to mess up. You, you always go back and, and recommit. You're going to do it God's way. And if you'll do this and, and you continue with it, what will happen is as you're confessing the word over yourself, your mind's going to get renewed. If you're declaring God's promise over you, it will renew your mind. When your mind gets renewed, the flesh has less power over you because now the mind can take control. Ultimately, we want to be led by the Spirit, not our minds. But you got to start somewhere. So the Bible says, receive with meekness the engrafted word, which has the power to save or take control of your mind, will, and emotions. So we go to the word, we meditate upon it. Say, what word? Well, what word promises strength over temptation? you got to go find that word. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Nothing's impossible to me because I'm a believer. See, there's, there's a lot of scriptures you can use. But you meditate on those. You, you begin to declare them over your life until your mind gets locked into that. And finally, your mind's under control. Now, when your mind gets in tune with the Word of God, guess what? Your mind and your spirit then are in tune. When your mind and your spirit get in tune, the flesh has no chance. You understand what I'm saying? The, the mind is the deciding realm, and the spirit is the leading of God. You get the leading of God mixed or co uh, connected to the mind that makes decisions, the flesh and the emotions eventually have to come under control of that combination. And you cannot be defeated. Hallelujah. All right. I already read to you or I quoted to you John chapter 1. Uh, I'll, well, I'll read it again. John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. Verse 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Hallelujah for that. Amen. Praise God. Just a quick recognition. Good to see Karina with us, Mary Smith, Aisha Ross, Anita Tenorino, Armand DeFranco. Praise God. Good to have you guys with us online. Looking forward to seeing you back in church, man. I'll tell you, we miss you guys. Hallelujah. All right. Psalm 103, verse 10, King James Translation. He has not dealt with us after our sins. Ooh, listen to this. He has not dealt with us. Put you, you in there. He has not dealt with me after my sins or according to my sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. He didn't just punish you on the spot. Verse 11. For as the heaven is high above the earth, so great, is his mercy toward them that fear him. And that word fear means reverence. Verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. Like, a, like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him, or reverence him. For he knoweth our frame, he remembereth that we are dust, as for man, his days are as grass, as the flower of the field, so he flourisheth. Verse 16, for the wind passeth over it, and it is gone, and the place thereof shall know it no more. But the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting upon them that reverence him and his righteousness unto children's children. To such, listen to verse 18. To such as keep his covenant, hallelujah, and those that remember his commandments and do them. We serve a covenant-keeping God. We serve a heavenly Father. We have a Lord Jesus Christ as Lord of our lives that has paid the price for our sins. So why should we live in the past? Why should we live in all the failures and mistakes? I mean, as a pastor, any pastor could tell you this just by their own experience. No, no, no pastor has 100% success in every endeavor. Most pastors have gone through good times and bad times. They've gone through good church growth, a lot of people, to no church growth and hardly any people. Every pastor has gone through this. So what do we do when we have the times that look like failure and defeat? We have to do the same thing you do. We've got to go to God. We've got to ask forgiveness if we've sinned, if we've missed the mark. And we can't get under condemnation because 
Things had changed. We just have to keep pressing on. And that's what Paul was getting at. I don't live in the past. I don't let it stop me. I keep pressing on toward the, the mark, the vision, the goal that God has put in me. I've got a vision that's much bigger than where this church is right now as a pastor. We, we were at a point years ago that we thought we were on our way to fulfilling everything that was in my heart that God had shown me, and then things changed. And all of a sudden, there were a lot of years where it didn't look like that was going to happen, that it would look like it again, and things would start to grow, and people would start to come, and then people would get offended and leave, and just all kinds of nonsense going on. The devil just trying to keep us from doing the work God's called us to do. But you know what? I don't give up on my vision. I don't quit. We are not quitters. Believers are not quitters. Believers believe, and if you believe, then you stand. Paul says, after having done all, stand. How long do you stand? You stand until Jesus comes or you've already won the victory in that situation. We as pastors are standing for the vision that God's put in our hearts, and we will stand until Jesus comes. We as, as parents... We stand for our children. As grandparents, we stand for our grandchildren. And we will stand for them no matter what we see or hear until Jesus comes. Why? Because we're not quitters. We are believers. We believe God. We trust his word. We trust what he's given to us in covenant. And we will not back down from that. That's the decision you've got to make. It's just what Paul was talking about. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I made this comment. I'll say it again. Since God forgives us, and forgets, we've read those verses, we need to do the same thing. We need to forgive ourselves and put our mistakes behind us. Amen? Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Then we need to begin to declare, and I said this again, we need to get, begin to declare what God says about us. So we begin to get a picture in our own minds that we are righteous. We are children of God. We, we are seated with Jesus in heavenly places. We are above only and not beneath. We are blessed when we rise up, blessed when we lie down, blessed when we come in, blessed when we go out, blessed when we sit in our house, blessed when we walk by the way. Everything we set our hands to are blessed. Our children are blessed. Our animals are blessed. Our cupboards are blessed. How far do I need to go with this? You get the point. We are blessed. We got a new entry map. Uh, we were at Brother... Jerry Seville's pastor's conference back in November and he has these mats on one side as you're going if you're going out of the house it says I'm blessed when I go out the other side of the mat when you're coming in it says I'm blessed when I come in we had we had one before and we've just about worn it out we got a new one and I look at that when I walk out and I say yep I'm blessed going out when I come in I say yep I'm blessed when I come in so you've got to finally settle on what God has said as fact and get that into your mind so it's renewed. And you only do that by meditating on it until that happens. Amen? Amen? Now, the last thing is, once we get past those issues, we need to do what Paul said. I press on. What? He said, for the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Or as he said there in the, in the Passion Translation, uh, that, that he talked about pressing forward, moving forward, to that thing that God has placed him here for, that purpose and that vision God has put in his heart. We've got to do the same thing. I don't care what your station is in life. You've got to do the same thing. Nobody is at the place they desire to be or that God has called them to be yet. We're all moving that. that that's what Paul was talking about. He says, I don't yet consider that I've attained, but one thing I do, I press on, forgetting those things which are behind I press on. And that's what we've got to learn to do. Amen? Romans chapter 2, verse 12. Paul says again, Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I made up my mind, I don't want to settle for good and acceptable. It's good. God says, well, that's good, you know. That's acceptable. Well, God says, okay, I can let you do, go with that. But I want the perfect will of God. I don't want to be that person that's on the outskirts of God's real plan for my life. I want to be the one that's right in the middle of God's plan for my life. And that's what we've got to decide. 
And, and when I read that verse, that's what my thought immediately goes to. I'm not accepting acceptable or, or good. I want God's perfect will. When I seek God, I'm seeking for his perfect plan for this service. And I do this every Bible study on Tuesday nights, every service on Sunday mornings. I spend time seeking God for his perfect plan for this service. What am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to say? Holy Spirit, give me utterance. Give me the words to speak, the thoughts to convey. Open people's hearts and minds to hear and to receive. But give me the words that are the anointed words of God because the anointing will destroy the yoke. So when I get up here to preach, I don't just preach things I want to preach. I preach what God gives me to preach. And people need to understand that most pastors that, have, that are true pastors, that's the way they do it. They don't preach something because their denomination says they're supposed to preach it on this week. They preach something because it came from the Spirit of God in their hearts. And God said, this is what you're to minister on today. These are the comments you're supposed to make. And that's what I pray for every week, seeking God for his perfect plan for Sunday morning when I come in. Amen? Amen. I want to go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Jesus, in Matthew here, says, Ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh, receiveth. When you ask God for his plan, for his wisdom, he doesn't withhold he gives it to you. Amen. It says, everyone that asks, receives. Amen? He says, and he that seeketh, findeth. If you will seek God, you'll find. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. And then all these things will be added unto you. The things were the natural things. What am I going to wear? What am I going to have to eat? Where am I going to live? <laughs> God says, seek first the kingdom. And then he'll take care of the rest of that. Amen? All right. To him that knocketh, it shall be opened. He didn't say anything like might in any one of these things. It shall be given, you shall find, it shall be opened. God does, does not mince words. He hits the mark every time. And it's up to us to believe and accept what God has said. Verse 9, he says, Or what man is there of you? Whom if his son asks bread, will give him a stone. Or if he asks a fish, will he give him a serpent? If you then being evil know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? We've got to develop faith and confidence in that by meditating on it until it goes off inside of us. We had on um, Christmas... Actually, we, we, said, we had an interesting, very quiet Christmas day. Uh, Christmas Eve is when we had our Christmas with our family because they have two families. They've got to go visit the dad's side of the family. So we had Carrie and her kids down. Autumn was home from uh, Boise, Idaho, from school. And they all came down. We spent the entire day. What a, what a blessed day. And we ate, and sometimes people took naps along the way during the day because you eat too much. And then we played, you know, and we talked and we, you know, joked and just, we had a good time. Just family being family. And I, I watched and my grandkids, they, you know, sometimes they just go in and get stuff out of the refrigerator. I've talked about that before and that's perfectly fine. And uh, Autumn, our oldest grandchild, she went and got my special ice cream. <laughs> I've talked about that before. And I, I think she asked Mary Sorry if I have some of this. Well, she wouldn't have had to ask, but I, please, I appreciate her, her uh, respect. And she asked if she could have some of Papa's ice cream. Well, actually, I bought enough for them so that they could actually have that if they wanted. And then, you know, they, they go in the refrigerator and they got out the eggnog and they got themselves eggnog. They got whatever they wanted. They, we had a box of seized candy and they would eat seized candy. We, they didn't have to ask every time they took a piece of candy. Uh, they, they, you know, there was, we left food out on the table. Uh, man, we had a big roast and we had ham and we had mashed potatoes and gravy and we had, uh, my spiced, uh, sp how do you say it? spiced or spicy? Spiced. 
spiced cranberry sauce I make. And boy, is it good. <laughs> and uh, we had all this stuff out, and they just took whatever they wanted, as much as they wanted. We didn't care if they ate everything. Why? Because we made it to bless them. And we and Mary had a big old pumpkin pie, and she had her, her she only makes this strudel like twice a year. It's an apple strudel. It is the best in the world. That's my opinion. And uh, she makes it a couple times a year, so it's really special when it comes to holidays and we get to have the apple strudel. And the kids would go in there and they'd cut themselves a big piece of apple. She makes it as a big, a big dish, so there's a lot of it. They'd cut themselves a piece and have that, and they were just having the best time eating and drinking their eggnog or, you know, whatever. And, and, and by the way, <laughs> in the process of all this, our ice maker got fixed. Our, uh, our uh, grandson, Austin, he went over there and put his glass. It had not worked for, what, a couple of years. And I've laid hands on it. I command it to work. I've prayed. I've done I've looked at it, tried to figure out what's wrong with it. And he went over there and stuck his glass in there and started working. I thought, uh, <clears throat> okay, praise the Lord. It's working. That's all that matters. Now we got our ice maker back. Anyway, we had a good time. And I wasn't upset with any of our family for eating the food, drinking the drinks. Uh, I, I was happy that they were blessed. Amen. And even when individuals took naps in the middle of the day, it didn't bother me. I thought, you know, it's nice that they're comfortable enough that they can lay down and take a nap and not feel intimidated or, you know, I'm going to get on their case for sleeping in the middle of our Christmas celebration, you know. Uh, I think we all, to some degree, wanted to do that. <laughs> but um, they enjoyed themselves. Now, I say all that because I'm a father and I'm a grandfather, and Mary is a mother and a grandmother, and we love our family. Well, if, if we can love like that, how much do you think God loves us? And, and we read these verses that talk about how God has forgiven us and we're supposed to put it behind us and that God's got a plan for each of us and a perfect will that we can strive toward and, and that he's made provision for us to get to that place. And instead of making excuses and letting the devil beat us over the head with guilt and condemnation, We've got to just put that behind us and tell the devil, shut up. <laughs> I'm moving on. Amen? Amen? And this past year, you know, I, I think there's everybody can look at something in this past year and say, well, I missed it here. I, I wasn't in faith there or whatever it might be. Put that behind. Get it, get it in the distant, far past file away. You know, like, like I've got files... I, I go to about once every five years, and they're, I call them ancient history. And um, I, I eventually get rid of stuff, get rid of some of those files when they're, long, long, they're no longer valid. But we've got to get those kind of files that are, you lock them away and never bring them up again. They're gone. You just take that file and throw it out. Gone. Amen? How? Cast your care over the Lord. Why? He cares for you. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me wrap this up. I think we're just about done. And in uh, Joshua 1, 8, this is a scripture everybody that listens to this ministry ought to know. Joshua 1, 8 and 9. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but out of your mouth. That's your confession. You shall meditate on it. That's speaking it day and night so that you may observe. That's gaining insight, revelation. To do. See, that's the third aspect. Do. All that's written there. And then... You shall make your way prosperous. You will have good success. One translation says, and you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. So that, that scripture, those, those verses are the ones, well, verse 8 particularly, God gave me when he called me to the ministry. And it, it really is the, the key to success in life. Meditate God's word, get the revelation, and then act on it. Do the word. And when we do that, we'll begin to prosper, we'll begin to succeed, we'll begin to make wise decisions. Then verse 9 says, Have not I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. I know who he was talking to back then, Joshua. But it's God's word to us as well. The principles that God's told Joshua, the principles that he's speaking to us. We want to build our vision on what God has put in our hearts. Just because it's in your heart 
doesn't mean you've built a vision yet. You've got to take what God speaks to you and puts in your heart and make and build a vision of that till you think it, you talk it, you see it, and you dream about it. When you do that, you'll begin to have that unction, that, that desire to push forward and begin to bring that thing to pass. Amen? Hallelujah. We need to begin moving in the direction of the vision God has put in our hearts. Hallelujah. We go to James chapter 1. We'll close with this. Wherefore lay apart all filthiness, all superfluity of naughtiness. Receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save or renew your soul. Remember your mind, will, and emotions. But be ye doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Amplified says by deceiving yourselves by reasoning contrary to the truth. When we finally begin to press on, we've got to meditate the word until it becomes a reality in our own minds, until we actually believe that, not just a religious thought or not just a mental belief, but we actually, it goes down in our hearts. We know that we know that we know that's, that's God's plan. And then we begin to find out, Holy Spirit, what's the steps I need to take? What's my next step? How, what direction do I go to get to that place that God's got prepared for me? And you begin to seek wisdom. The Bible says if you lack wisdom, ask and God will give it to you without finding fault. You begin to receive that wisdom. And you begin to make those plans as the Holy Spirit guides and directs. And you put it down on paper and you, you get those scriptures out and you meditate on those. And you don't do it just one time. You continue to do it and you continue. This is how you stand. You continue to do it until that vision manifests in your life. Amen. And I like what Paul says. I'll bring it up one more time. When things get tough, Paul says, after having done all, stand. Amen. Having done all, you do everything you know to do. You say, God, I, I, I don't know what else to do. He said, well, stand. Stand. Believe God. Just stand. Put your trust in God. Don't quit. See, we're not quitters. My last two words on that is don't give up. Don't quit. Hallelujah. So we forget those things that are behind we press on toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus till we walk in that place of victory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for your word for us this morning as we prepare to enter into the next year this week. Father, I believe this year, this year 2021, that, Father, we will live this way, that we will put the past behind us and that we will... Press forward, Father, pressing forward, running the race with purpose that we might achieve what you have prepared and planned for our lives. Oh, the devil cannot stop us. The devil cannot hinder us. We're the only ones that can do that. But we make a commitment. We will not listen to the lies of the devil in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, bring it to their remembrance when they need it. Give them insight and revelation. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. If you need prayer out there, uh, I want you to put your hand on your device, whatever it is you're watching or listening by. If it's your phone or pad or computer or smart television, put your hand on it. And I'm going to pray, and I believe that anointing is going to flow into your body right now. If you need healing in your body, if you need a manifestation of, of finances, provision of some sort, you put your hand there, that anointing is going to flow into you. In the name of Jesus, I loose and release the anointing of God into your life and your situation. I command healing to flow from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. I command finances to be released into your life in Jesus' name, supernaturally, even from unexpected sources. Father, we thank you right now that anything else that they have been bound with, that have been hindered and slowed down with. I break the power of that. Devil, you loose them and let them go. Take your hands off them in Jesus' name. And I command freedom, spirit, soul, and body, and from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. Be loosed and be free this day and enter into the next year in victory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you need prayer for something, uh, I haven't seen any prayer requests come in yet this morning uh, online here. 
if you are watching by uh, uh, Periscope, by the way, Periscope is switching. Uh, they're going to switch their programming, and they're switching us over to Twitter, which we're already on Twitter. Excuse me, I, I'm not going to sneeze in the name of Jesus. <laughs> So Periscope is going away as we know it, as of March, uh, I forget the date, it's in March though. Um, I think they said the 21st, but I could be wrong, but March they're going away. So they're already switching us over. When I go to Periscope, it switches me to, to Twitter. But we, we have set up and we're getting prepared to switch some of our programming over to uh, Rumble and Parlor. And I, I don't yet have those set fully. I've got them, but I don't have them set up yet where we can switch everything. But we're going to be switching because we're getting too much censorship by Twitter, by um, Facebook. And even the uh, first time I saw it this week on uh, YouTube has begun to censor. And I heard one guy, he was, he was speaking about the deep state. And every time he would say, Deep, they blank out state. They didn't want him to be able to say deep state. Uh, so I've begun to see some of that. So we're switching over uh, both Tumblr, 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 Rumble, Rumble, <laughs> and Parlor have declared that they are an open forum and they will not censor us and we'll be able to speak freely of what God has said. Amen? Amen. So we haven't made this switch yet. We're working on it. As soon as I get it all figured out, we'll let you know. In the meantime, if you need prayer, uh, or I'd really like to hear some testimonies from some of you folks out there, uh, send me a message on, uh, I, I, on Facebook. I know how you do it. It's right there below. Uh, on Twitter and on Periscope, I don't know because I don't use that much. So you know how to do it. Send me a message. Or you can email me at wemmons01 at gmail.com and uh, send me your testimony. Send me your uh, prayer request, and we will pray and believe God for your miracle. And uh, I'd love to hear your testimonies. That encourages us too. Amen? Amen. We're going to go ahead and worship God this morning with our tithes and offerings. So I want to pray, and we're going to play some special music uh, for you in a minute. So Father, we ask you to speak to your people this morning. Show them what their part is. Those, Father, you're calling to partner with us, put that in the heart. Let them know that they can make that commitment and let them know what it is that they're committing to. And Father, for those that support this ministry, speak to their hearts about what they do this morning. And those that should be supported, that maybe haven't been, speak to them as well, Father. And Father, we thank you for you are our source. We know you have many resources, but ultimately you are our source. And we run into your provision this morning. And we thank you, Father, that you promised to meet every need and to give us the desires of our heart as we delight ourselves greatly in you. So we call every need in this ministry met. We call every bill paid, any and every debt paid off, and abundance besides so that we can be a part of blessing others. And Father, as the people give, I'm praying and, and agreeing with them, cause the seed they sow today to multiply supernaturally, to multiply quickly, let it come back abundantly. Not just 30-fold, not just 60-fold, but Father, give them a 100-fold return and no less. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Uh, let me tell you before we start the music, uh, if you want it, if you're watching online, you can give by PayPal, that email I gave you, W-E-M-M-O-N-S, zero and one at gmail.com. Uh, that's our email account. You can go to PayPal. Make sure you choose the friends and family option. We are both friends and family. Uh, that way they won't take out fees. We also have a Venmo, V-E-N-M-O, is that right? Venmo account. And it, we've already set it up for the church. Uh, when you give in Venmo, you look for William Emmons. Make sure you see this face. And uh, then they will not take out fees. Uh, if you want to give by debit or credit card, you have to text or email us your, your uh, credit card information, including the zip code where the billing goes to. And we will run that, and as soon as we run it and it's approved, we will delete all that information from our devices so nobody can get their hands on it. 
Uh, the, the email address, also W-E-M-M-O-N-S-01 at gmail.com. If you want to text it, you can text us at 818-679-7067. Um, if you want to give by check or money order, uh, you can send it to Post Office Box 4238, West Hills, California, <coughs> California, excuse me, 91308. I hope you got that all. <laughs> Amen. All right. You do your giving. We're going to play some music here, and I believe you're going to be blessed. God. That was good. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those amens out there. Appreciate all of you um, online. And um, I saw a message from Armon um, on the camera, but I don't see it here. Uh, it may have been from Periscope. Anyway, 
Love you guys. Have a blessed week. Have a happy new year. I trust you had a great Christmas. I know we did. So have a happy new Hey, praise the Lord. I didn't see you come in. Okay. <laughs> praise the Lord. So have a blessed and happy new year. And uh, enjoy the festivities. But don't forget, you serve the Lord. And you're going to walk as his ambassador, not just this next week, but this next year. We're going to walk as his ambassadors like we've never walked before. Amen. We're going to see great things that we've never seen before. Amen. And we're going to have a mighty move of God, and you can be a part of it. Amen? Amen. 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 Be blessed. Happy New Year in advance.